proud to introduce to you a brand new product from Forge and Stuff. We're going to go over today what you got in the mail. So this is the new mod kit from Forge and Stuff, and it's what we're going to be unpacking today. So you can expect to see what's in this box and why they're important components. Well, let's get to unpacking. It's a no thrills box, but it's packed so that it will arrive without any scuffs and or breaks in your material. Everything is coated in black oxide for longevity. So the first thing you're gonna find here is your new and improved table. So big step up from the original version that's included in the Shop Fox or Grizzly. Next in the kit, you will find what makes this all possible. So this is the main arm. So this bolts onto the Grizzly and Shop Fox, and that's what is gonna drive all of your accessories. So you'll find there's a tube with a hole in it, and then the main arm here. Next, We have our big bracket that's going to hold our new four inch wheels. So this is going to actually bolt onto that guy right there. And that's what's going to hold our new wheels on and our flat platen. So the flat platen, also a nice step up from what you got from Grizzly. This guy right here is the new bracket that's gonna slide on to your main T-bar, and that's what's gonna hold your table on. So that guy goes with that. All right, this guy is gonna be replacing the OEM version, and that's what's gonna hold your flat platen on. So those two go together. And the part that makes this so much of an improvement from the first generation is this upright arm. This guy goes straight onto your Grizzly and Shop Fox. This is what makes this kit so important. Without this piece, you would be voiding your warranty. But with it, we have a solution for you to be able to take your grinder to the next level. So you're gonna get that OEM piece plus a new upright. And last but not least are your wheels. So you got two of these four inch wheels that complete the modification kit along with your hardware. So with everything right here, you will be able to take your standard Shop Fox or Grizzly knife grinder and turn it into a truly performing machine that's gonna allow you to up your game and bring you to the next level while staying under $1,000. So we're really psyched to have this new kit from Forge and Stuff. We hope you enjoy it and put it to good use.
what we're going to do today is show you how to install the new mod kit onto your Grizzly or ShopFox unit. But in order to do that, we actually have to take this unit apart. So what we're going to go through in this segment is taking your Grizzly grinder or your ShopFox grinder apart in order to get your new mod kit on. Where I always like to start is the table. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. You're going to take your 732nds Allen key and there's a bolt right here at the base that holds that on. So we're just going to take that off. It should be on there with lock washer and another washer. We're just going to take that out and set it aside. Now that we have our table off, the next step is to remove our belt and main drive wheel. So to remove your belt, pull down on your tensioner, set your belt aside. Loosen the big nut on the arbor, set that all aside, and now we have our drive wheel off. Now that we have our belt and main drive wheel off, we're going to focus up here on our tracking wheel. So you're going to notice there is two Allen set screws in here. You're going to use a 532nd Allen key and you're going to loosen those. After you loosen the very first one, you're going to want to apply some pressure to the top this spring is loaded, so it's going to want to go somewhere on you. So once you get that loosened, you can pull that off and set that aside. We're going to come back to this a little bit later when we take the guard off. All right, now that we have our main tracking wheel off, we're going to take out this main upright shaft. This is important to note. These two knobs right here, we are going to reuse in the installation of the mod kit. So don't let those go too far. So we're going to take those out. set those aside for later. This main upright shaft can be saved. You're not going to need this. This uh, new piece comes in your new mod kit. Now it's time to take off the main assembly here. So there's two set screws, one in the front and one underneath. You're going to need a 3 16 Allen key to do this. So we're just going to loosen those. Make sure you're holding this. I've already loosened the bottom one and you're just going to pull that off. You can just set this aside. You're not going to need any of this. This is all now included in your new mod kit. One of the other modifications that we're going to have to do to the OEM unit is removing this top guard. In order to do this, you're going to need your 532nd hex bit again. And there are three different set screws here that we have to loosen. First start with the tracking, then this guy holds the shaft onto the main assembly. Once those two are loose, we should be able to slide this out and there's one additional screw that holds the guard on. Get that guy loose and slide the guard off. And set that aside. We're just going to slide that back in. You'll see the markings on the shaft of where everything used to be. So we're going to try and stay close to where they were. We will end up fine tuning this in the end. All right, now that we have our Grizzly completely stripped down, it's time to start the assembly of the mod kit. The first piece we're gonna start with is our main upright arm. You're gonna have two holes in the arm and you're gonna need a 4.5 Allen key to do this but you want to set these screws in there, not all the way because we still need to slide over. So you kind of check the backside. Once we get them in there, we can then go to installing it on the main shaft of the Grizzly. You want to ensure that this portion is pointed away from the grinder 
And now that we have it in there, we're just gonna tighten down with our 4.5 Allen key. One's above, or one's in the back, one is below. Now that we have those assembled, the next step is to take our wheel components that we originally took off and reinstall those. So we're gonna take our wheel flanges, stick one on, get our wheel on there, get our other wheel flange on, and then our nut. And you're gonna to want to get this a little bit more than finger tight, right about a quarter of a turn past finger tight, and you should be good to go. Now that we have our drive wheel installed, it's time to install our main upright shaft. To accomplish this, we're gonna need our main upright shaft, the knob from the original Grizzly or Shop Fox, and the 7 8 long bolt that you're gonna use a 9 16 ratchet with. First project is getting that shaft installed down. You're gonna notice there's three holes in the shaft. This is a Grizzly unit. So for the Grizzly unit, you're gonna use the two top bolts, you're going to come down about an inch below the top of the groove in the channel. I like to install the knob first. That holds everything in place. And then the bolt second. The third hole on your main upright shaft is if you were using a 10 inch drive wheel. With the 10 inch drive wheel, we have to set the main arm down a little further than with the eight inch. Make sure those are good and tight. This can be hand tight. I like to go about a quarter turn past hand tight on the bottom bolt. All right, now that we have our main upright installed, what we're gonna do next is grab back our main tracking assembly from the original Shop Fox or Grizzly. This is spring loaded. So you're gonna need a 532nds Allen key. You're gonna wanna apply pressure to the top, try and apply it evenly. And you're just gonna tighten those set screws down. Don't really worry about keeping it straight at this point. We will have to work on getting everything aligned in just a little bit. Now that we have our main tracking wheel installed, it's time to install the main component to the mod kit. This is what's gonna house everything, including the new wheels. So what we're gonna need here is the main mod, your two hex bolts with washers, and a 5.5 millimeter Allen key. It's important to note when you're installing this piece that the main section of this is pointed towards the grinder. So to install it, simply bring it up to your main upright arm, line up your holes, and get your screws started. Take your 5.5 millimeter Allen key and tighten her down. You don't need to go crazy here. You just need it nice and tight. Now that we have our main component installed on the mod kit, the next step is to take your tube. You want the holes on the tube to be pointed horizontally, not vertically. So just go ahead and slide that into your mod. and take the knob from the original Grizzly or Shop Fox and install that. You just need it finger tight at this point. We're gonna be adjusting this later. All right, now that we have our main tube installed, it's time to install our main upright. So this is what's gonna house our two four inch wheels. So in order to install this component, we're gonna need the all thread bolt that has the three quarter inch head two washers, and then the nylon locking nut. This is the only part that I use a power tool. I mean, it's just because this is a long bolt and it takes a lot of threading to get through the main arm here. But you're gonna need a three quarter inch, and then you're also gonna want a three quarter inch wrench. So, let's get started. We're gonna stick a washer on there, get our bolt through the main arm, we're gonna take our main upright. It is important to note here that the bottom two grooves are on the bottom. You don't want those on the top. This is what's gonna hold your table in place later. So once we get this guy on there, you wanna get it all lined up.
and thread it through. You're going to take your washer and your nylon nut and start threading that. Now that we have our main wheel assembly upright installed, we are going to install our wheels. So what you're going to need to pull out of your kit to accomplish this task is your two four inch wheels, your two partially threaded bolts that are threaded a quarter of the way, four nylon washers, two of your larger steel washers, and two nylon locking nuts. So the first step to this is taking your bolt and installing your nylon washers. You want to push that all the way to the end, take your wheel, install your wheel, and then follow it up with another nylon washer. The nylon washers are what protects your bearings and your wheels while you're operating your machine. You've got to do that for both bolts. Once those are installed, you're going to see that there's two threaded holes on your upright. Those two threaded holes are what we're going to install our wheels on. I don't like using any power tools at this stage because you really want to be careful about how tight you get your wheels on here. If you over tighten these, you will burn out your bearings. So we want to avoid any over tightening on this step. The next step is installing your washer. So go ahead and install your washers on your wheels and then your nylon nuts. It's very important here. So I have three quarter inch wrench and three quarter inch socket. Again, we want to make very certain that we aren't over tightening. So we go nice and slow. You want to test it, make sure there's not a whole lot of wiggle. You want it to be able to rotate freely just like that. So let's go up to our next guy. I'm going to tighten her down just a little bit. All right, got it a little over tight there. You want to back it off just a little bit. To where you have it nice and free with no wiggle and tighten the bolt down. Now you have both wheels spinning freely. All right, now that we have our two four inch wheels installed, it's time to install our new flat platen. So to accomplish this task, what we're gonna need to pull out of the kit is our two 916 all thread bolts, two washers, two locking washers, and two nuts. This is your flat platen holder bracket. For the flat platen itself, you're gonna need the flat platen, a 5.5 millimeter Allen key, your two Allen key bolts, and two washers that correspond with that. We're also gonna be using some 916 wrenches and sockets. The first thing you wanna do is install your washers. You take your bracket, line it up over the two holes and stick your bolt through. I like to do this one at a time, makes life a little easier. You take your walking washer and your nut Get it to finger tight just so it won't go anywhere on you and put in your other bolt. Again, locking washer and your nut. And get that finger tight. We're going to come back and get that a little bit tighter after we install the flat platen itself. So to install the flat platen, we're going to take our two Allen bolts, install our washers, 
take our flat platen, come around here, get that lined up, and install those bolts. Again, just finger tight will do for now. You can come back and make adjustments in just a moment. All right, now that we have our flat platen installed, it's time to install the bracket that's gonna hold our table. The uh, bracket that holds our table has three threaded holes and then a long slot. Then you're gonna have your two uh, hex bolts with locking washers and standard washers. The first step to this is to prep your bolts. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and throw a locking washer on and then your washer. Get both of those set up for your install. The next step, you don't have to be horribly accurate because this is slotted so we can move. So you're gonna come through the bolt with your slot. You're gonna line up the bracket and go ahead and get those in there finger tight. We're gonna be adjusting this later after we put our belt on. Now that we have our holder for the table here, it's now time to install the table. So what you're gonna need is your table, your two carriage bolts, two washers, and two nylon locking nuts. What I like to use is a deep socket half inch drive uh, for this part of the process. So the first step is getting your first carriage bolt in there. Your table comes on this side of that carriage bolt. You put a washer on there, your nylon nut, line it up with your flat platen. It's notched to remove any sort of grinder bite and go ahead and tighten that guy down. All right, we just repeat that process for the second guy here. Again, carriage bolt, washer, nylon nut and go ahead and tighten it down. Now that we have our mod kit fully assembled on our Grizzly or Shop Fox unit, it's now time to look at some fine tuning options. This, uh, this kit, you obviously took off a lot of components and you had to reinstall them. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double check the install. And I'm gonna also show you some tips and tricks to keeping your unit tracking perfectly. So to accomplish this, what we're gonna need is a couple of things. We're gonna need a belt, we're gonna need a large square, a carpenter square, a speed square, a level, and some electrical tape. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is to make sure that this upright assembly is in line with this bolt right here. So you're gonna take your speed square, and you're gonna come in here, and you're gonna line that up. What you're looking for here is to make sure that the middle of your tube is lined up perfectly with the set screw that holds this entire tracking assembly in place. So what we see here is that we are right on dead center and you can check that you have the top post coming out. So you wanna align the middle of the top post with the middle of that screw and the middle of this round tube that holds everything in alignment. If for some reason you are out of alignment one direction or the other, you're gonna take your Allen key, loosen these two bolts and then rotate your top assembly until it matches center, compress it all down and tighten everything up. The next step to making sure that everything is in line, remember at the beginning of the video, we ended up taking off the top guard. Well, things could have shifted up here. So you might be too far out or too far in. So what you wanna do is take, a, take your big carpenter square and you wanna align it with the two bottom wheels here. 
and then see where you are on the top wheel. So what you can see there is we're in complete alignment with all of our wheels. So we do not need to modify where this wheel is at this time. So we take this out. If you were too far in or too far out, the two screws that you're gonna be adjusting are these two right here, these two set screws. Again, grab your Allen key and push your wheel in or pull your wheel out as needed. So after we've checked all of our alignment, the next step is to recone our top wheel here. This is our tracking wheel. This is what keeps the belt in line while we're grinding. So what I found is the Grizzly and Shop Fox tracking wheel really isn't convexed enough. So what we wanna do is we wanna take some standard electrical tape or friction tape, and we're gonna try and hit it dead center on the middle of this wheel. So to accomplish that, we find our middle. You can even see the little grooves from the factory. And you want to then take your tape and roll it onto the wheel. And it's important to try and keep it dead center because that's what's gonna keep everything centered on our grinder. I like to make about four passes with the tape before I call it good. Then just take your knife and cut it off and make sure it's firmly pressed down. Now it's time to install our belt. So what makes the mod kit kind of neat is we have a couple of different points to adjust our attention now. In the previous model or the original, you only had up and down. So you would have to adjust your tension knobs to adjust your tension on your grinder. Now we have the tension knobs and we also have the mod kit arm. So what I like to do is bring it in and throw my belt on with low tension. And then I like to slide my mod kit out, see where I hit tension, take my belt off, and bring it just a little bit further. Added tension to the grinder is gonna increase your tracking. So now that we've added some tension, it's time to reinstall our belt. All right, now that we have our belt on there, let's turn the machine on and see how we did. You can adjust your tracking with your tracking knob up here. Right now though, we're running dead center throughout all the wheels. Let's test the grind under pressure. We're getting a nice, smooth, consistent grind. Everything seems to be tracking just fine. And there you have it. The Forge and Stuff mod kit fully installed on a Grizzly grinder. I wanna go through some pro tips on some additional features that your mod kit has also going through some just general tips and tricks. So one is making sure that you have the correct amount of tension. You want a good fair amount of tension on the belt. So all you have to do is pull your mod kit in or out and then tighten down that tension knob. When you're looking at your belts, you wanna make sure that they're not directional. This belt happens to be directional. This is the belt that comes with the Grizzly and Shot Fox unit. You also kind of want to pay attention to whether your belt has waterproof backing or is a dry use only belt. The belt that comes with the mod kit is a dry use only belt, so we won't be using any water when we're grinding. So we got to get that belt on there, and I've given it too much tension, so we're going to back it off just a little bit, tighten her back down, and stick that belt on there. Now. Once our belt's on there, we have a couple of different adjustments we can make. 
the flat platen here should be aligned with the belt. If it is not, there are two bolts on the back that you can loosen and then move that flat platen into alignment. The other thing that we're looking for is just a very small gap in between the belt and the flat platen. So you want to be able to push in on it and still have a little bit of play. You don't want it riding solidly on that. So to adjust that, all you're going to do is loosen these bolts, push that flat platen in or out. The other thing we've done is we've aligned the table with the edge of the flat platen. You'll notice that the table is cut out. This is to allow for you to be able to rest your blade on the table, but for your blade not to fall through. So it's important, they call it grinder bite, when the blade kind of comes through and gets stuck. It can be very dangerous, that's why we've notched this, to eliminate that as a possibility or greatly reduce it. So after we've made these fine tuning adjustments, let's go ahead and see how our grinder is operating. So as you can see, by holding it nice and flat with the table, we're able to achieve a really nice bevel on that knife. Just a few quick passes, I mean this is only a 100 grit belt so we're not taking off a whole lot of material here, but just to give you an example of how efficient this machine is, just one pass on each side gave me a real nice bevel and the real nice start of a blade. So, one of the things came up is can I do bigger projects with this machine? So what we have here is an axe. So we're going to try and put a nicer bevel on this axe. You know, we might need to replace the table, but it looks like I'm going to have enough clearance to give this a nice grind all the way through. So let's give it a go. With just a few quick passes, we have the start of a really nice edge on that axe. So I love this machine for a lot of reasons. Knife smithing, blade smithing is one of them. It's also just an excellent machine for doing all sorts of tooling projects. With the mod kit installed, it gives you so many more options for grinding, including using your flat platen, your two extra wheels, and then you also get a fair amount of slack belt. So if I wanted to do a free edge on this axe, all I'd have to do is take it to the grinder and come under here. And you can extend that bevel and really take any project to the next level. And one of the other benefits to this machine is the two set screws that hold the upright arm in place. If you loosen those set screws, you can actually rotate the unit backwards so that you can use this soft contact wheel to potentially do hollow grinds or finer detail work. So in closing, the mod kit from Forge and Stuff really takes this unit to the next level. Thank you for purchasing one. Thank you for watching our video.